Here we have our two-ended feeder from before, with an impedance relay on both ends. As before, we set the zone 1 reach to 80% for both relays, and made them instantaneous, and the zone 2 reach to 120% and given them a small time delay. To overcome the issue we had before of delayed tripping for a fault in the first and last 20% of the feeder, we provide communication between the two impedance relays. Let's now see how this works. Firstly, let's energise the feeder. As we can see, both relays are now measuring the load impedance. Let's now add a fault halfway down the line. Straight away, both of the impedance relays will see the fault in zone 1 and send the zone 1 pickup signal down the communication circuit to the relay at the far end. What does zone 1 pickup mean? Well, as soon as the impedance value goes into the zone 1 coverage, it immediately generates the pickup signal to say that the zone 1 elements have been initiated and the signal is sent instantaneously regardless of any zone timer settings. Both of the relays now trip instantaneously clearing the fault from the system. Let's now restore the circuit. Let's now add a fault in the first 10% of the feeder near to end A. On this occasion, end A will see the fault in zone 1 and send the zone 1 pickup signal via the communication circuit to the other impedance relay. It also trips instantaneously on zone 1. Clearing the fault from end A. On end B, the relay sees the fault in zone 2, but because we've received a zone 1 pickup intertrip from the far end, we don't wait for the usual half a second, but instead trip the circuit breaker on end B instantaneously, as we're now 100% certain that the fault is located on the protected feeder. <coughs> Clearing the fault from the system. So by adding the communication circuit, we can now clear instantaneously any fault that appears in between the current transformers on the feeder. This type of impedance relay scheme is called an acceleration scheme, as the relays use the communication circuit to accelerate the operation of the relays and remove any time delays. This is a very simple example of how we can use a communication system between the two ends to speed up the clearance of the feeder fault across its full length but shows how powerful the use of impedance relays with intertripping can be in identifying the precise location of the fault. What happens if we lose the communication system? Well, the scheme will then revert to its original mode, which is a delayed tripping on zone 2, i.e. a simple distance scheme. This isn't catastrophic, but may lead to unacceptable delays, which is why we usually have a first and second system main protection on transmission feeders so they provide a backup system in case something goes wrong. Ideally, these should work on different principles, so that if you lose the communication, you don't lose all of your protection. <laughs>